1 minute ma'am connect out to the laptop sure sure and then in meantime everybody joins in you can check your connections and everything then we can start the class okay. akriti yours is all set yes ma'am Would you like to start, Akriti? We start with your presentation. Yes, ma'am. In the meantime, let everybody move forward. Yeah. <laughs> Ma'am, am I audible and visible? Uh, yes, my screen is visible. Yes, screen is visible. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I am going to present on depression. So, depression is the most common form of mood disorder. In this, the person feels very depressed and loses interest in the things he or she likes to do previously. Mm -hmm. And it causes significant impair impairment in daily life for at least two weeks, as well as other symptoms such as changes in sleep or appetite or feelings of worthlessness. Its symptoms may include depressed mood most of the day, nearly every day, as indicated by either subjective report or observation made by others. Uh, in this, the person may feel sad, empty, or hopelessness, or uh, appears fearful. The second symptom may include diminished interest or pleasure in all or almost all activities most of the day, as indicated by either subject, subjective account or observation. Significant based weight loss may not dieting or weight gain, for example, a chance of more than 5% of body weight in a month or decrease or increase in appetite nearly every day. Insomnia or hypersomnia, either sleeping too much or not sleeping at all, psychomotor agitation or retardation, fatigue or loss of energy, feeling weakness, feeling of worthlessness or excessive or inappropriate guilt, which may be delusional, diminished ability to think or concentrate or indecisiveness nearly every day, recurrent thoughts of death, recurrent suicidal ideation without a specific plan or a suicide attempt or a specific plan for committing suicide, these symptoms cause clinically significant distress or impairment in social, occupational, or other important areas of functioning. Uh, these are symptoms in normal language. Uh, in this, it is divided on the basis of emotion, thoughts, physical, and behavior. The symptoms are same uh, in emotion. 
it may be sadness anxiety guilt anger mood swings irritability thoughts self criticism impaired memory indecisiveness confusion thoughts of death and suicide physical problems may include chronic fatigue lack of energy sleeping too much or too little weight gain or loss loss of motivation substance abuse behavior withdrawal from others neglection of responsibilities changes in personal appearance the uh, asanas and pranayams that will help in depression the first one is adhomukh swan asan downward facing pose this asan energizes and rejuvenates the body increases blood circulation to the brain helping to boost your mood help relieve headaches insomnia and fatigue uh, because of depression in our system the neurotransmitter of brain gets affected so the circulation in the brain is reduced and the minds become dull this asan will help in that the second one is sisu asan child pose Uh, it is deeply relaxing and it calms the nervous system helps in reducing stress and anxiety it gently stretches uh, lower back and hips and enable the body to relax placing the for forehead on the ground immediately makes one feel rooted and connected to the earth this provides a sense of a stability and it is helpful in sleep disturbances the third one third one is halasana low pause it calms the nervous system reducing stress stress and fatigue it stimulates the thyroid gland helping to improve the mood and energy level the fourth asana is savasana corpus pose it enables a deep and meditative rest releasing stress a major cause of depression helps reduce vat dosh imbalance in the air element which can cause you to feel depressed and anxious it refreshes you and it can be performed at the end of yoga sessions uh, the fifth um, pranayam is brahmri pranayam humming be breathing exercise it builds confidence and helps in calming the agitated mood how bo- body changes over time So in yoga asanas and pranayams helps bring a person into the present moment and allows them to clear their mind controlled focused movements also help in strengthen the body mind connection it also increases the heart rate variability or changes in time between heart beats by increasing the relaxation response over the stress response in the body it triggers the release of feel good chemicals in the brain these mood boosting chemicals include brain messengers such as dopamine serotonin and neuronephrine it can affect mood by elevating levels of brain chemicals called gamma amino butyric acid which is associated with decreased anxiety how i will sell this study to my client so by associating my works with others like schools colleges ngos and people who are working in this field for creating proper awareness addressing the target audience like adolescents or old age or child using social media and internet marketing techniques uh, initially giving two sessions for free or with very minimal amount doing my level best with the clients i work with so that it causes a positive effect effect uh, by building good rapport and trust adapting coaching style according to the client properly structured session so anything won't miss out using meditation like mindfulness relaxation techniques like uh, jacobson muscular relaxation technique cosmos therapy etc active listening and applying direct question questioning skill focusing on both scientific as well as a spiritual aspect and it is also be based on the clients uh, feeling towards it so if uh, he or she believes more in science then 
the hormone factors the neuron uh, neurotransmitter fact factors will be focused and if for if he or she believe in a spiritual aspects then uh, it is important in depression uh, it is important sorry ma'am because of depression uh, we lost connection with uh, our five fundamental elements so so it is important to connected with all of them so the five fun, how we can connect with them uh, by drinking so much of water for air element breathing exercises like anulom vilom kapal bharti for earth element uh, eating fresh home food or meditation meditation changes the nerve fibers in the brain making easier to cope up with mental problems and for fire element uh, sunlight vitamin d is very important and we can also add surya namaskar as whole uh, to better uh, healing that's all thank you so much ma'am very good presentation yeah very detailed nicely made good job akriti thank you ma'am yes please sati you can share your screen share yeah, my I screen have... yes ma'am mm -hmm. i am usually on mute because my dogs are barking so i don't want to disturb the class okay yes just please carry on yes ma'am Uh, good morning, everyone. Ma'am, my topic is irregular periods, ma'am. You didn't give any topics, right? That's why I took this one. It's okay, ma'am. Yes, yes, absolutely fine. And I didn't give any topic to anyone. You were not there in the class. Everybody selected their own topics. Okay, okay, yeah. okay, ma'am. Uh, what is irregular periods? Um, actually, the uh, menstrual cycle is. You're not the, sharing the screen. We can't. Yes, ma'am. I should. It's not shown. See. No, we are not seeing. Able okay. to see. Okay. Wait, ma'am. One minute. Um. Hmm. Okay, ma'am. Yes, no, it is visible. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Ah, uh, uh, then what are the irregular periods? Actually, the menstrual cycle is twenty-eight days for most of the women, but it can range some from uh, twenty-one to thirty-eight days. Um, this is called uh, irregular periods. Then, uh, what are the uh, the following changes observed in the cycle indicate irregular menstruation? Uh, a cycle having a length that exceed thirty eight days, thirty five days, um, then the absence of periods for ninety days without confirmed pregnancy, uh, and having a period more often uh, than every twenty one days, mm, then unusually heavy bleeding during the period, uh, then the periods uh, last more than a week, uh, then ble uh, bleeding or spotting in between uh, periods. Uh, then the too much cramps or pain in the uh, period. This kind of uh, causes in the irregular periods. Uh, then uh, research on the disease. Uh, <laughs> for pregnancy time and breastfeeding time, uh, it's caused uh, irregular periods. Then the hormonal imbalance. Uh, uh the uh, in, imbalance of the the segregation of hormones is different you no know, the two kinds of uh, hormones are there in the uh women estrogen and progesterone uh, these kinds of uh, uh, the something interrupts in the natural flow of the hormones uh where period may change the dates that is hormonal imbalance uh, then the polycystic ovary syndrome uh this kind of syndrome um 
uh, excess, uh, this kind of syndrome that uh, causes the irregular periods. Then the uncontrolled diabetes, the too much of diabetes, uh, high or low, this is the, cause the irregular periods. Then the faulty diet, and then the lifestyle, uh, irregular sleep uh, and irregular diets, junk food and all, you have to you know, uh, and that kind of uh, cause. Then uh, uterine fibroids, then weight issues, uh, some organ more weight or underweight, this uh, may cause the irregular periods, the thyroid problem, too much of thyroid or less segregation of thyroid hormones, uh, then too much exercise. Some people do too much of exercise, you know, that kind of issues. And monopause in ladies, 48, uh, 48 years, more than uh, women have the, you know, this one, monopause, you know, that kind of time. Then we cause the, uh, uh, this may, um, uh, uh, will lead to irregular periods. Uh, then what asanas and pranayama are helpful? Um, actually, maximum, the, this is kind of uh, asanas uh, is cure in the irregular periods. First one is Tadasan. It's a palm tree uh, pose. Uh, this ender spine, This uh, we should do this Tadasana. The ender spine is stretched and the spinal nerves are loosened. This asana develops physical and mental imbalance. Uh, then uh, Bhavana Muktashana. Bhavana Muktashana Yoga was, is this benefit says the massage the digestive organs and very effective in uh, removing pain and helping with the constipation. It also gives you relief from indigestion during the menstruational cycle. And uh, then the Sarvangasana Yoga. Was. The Sarvangasana helps in the smooth blood supply to the organs in the upper part of the body, such as the eyes, heart, and face thyroid roots of the uh, thyroid and the roots of the spinal nerves and the brain. Um, the circulatory congestion is relieved and the hormonal flow are freely into the blood. So it also treats menstrual related pains. Um, then uh, Dhanurasana, uh, Bhav Yoga pose. Uh, this helps to improve digestion by stimulating gastric segregations. Uh, for example, liver, abdominal organs, muscles are massaged in this uh, yoga pose. Uh, it is recommended for the uh, management of diabetes, menstrual disorders, and neck pain. Um, then Nadi Shodhana, uh, the alternative nozzle breather. Um, uh, it, it may get the extra oxygen in our body and the blood purified of toxins. This pranayam increases the vitality and uh, um, elevates the anxiety and the lower stress levels. Uh, nadi means channel at the flow of energy and shodhana means the purification. Uh, then the shavasana. The shavasana relaxes the body and the mind. It should be practiced before sleeping. Uh, this is also helpful in reducing discomfort during the menstruation. Um, uh, then other one is uh, brahmari, the humming bee breather. This may also cause the uh, irregular periods. Then ujjayi is the victorious breath. Then Kapalapati, butterfly pose. In fact, during the menstrual time, we do the butterfly pose. Um, it is re relieves our cramps, back pain also. Uh, then uh, how body changes in the overall time? Uh, this is not more harmful. Uh, one minute. And the irregular periods are usually not much harmful, but in the persistent or long time interval, uh, in irregularity, it may raise the risk of other conditions such as iron deficiency, like anemia, anemia, the low levels of uh, hemoglobin level, not that one. Then uh, every blood content iron, if the periods are heavy or frequent, the person may lose enough blood to cause in iron deficiency. Uh, this like uh, then uh, uh, hormonal imbalance, the segregation of hormonal, uh, the segregation of hormonal yes, hormones. Uh, then weight gain. Uh, some people um, in the in the irregular periods they are more weight gains. Uh, then uh, it may cause uh, infert. It's not the infertility, uh, but. Um, it, don't, it does not always affect infertility. In fact, plenty of women with irregular menstrual cycles get pregnant. But this time may take it uh, some harder for you to get the pregnancy. Uh, uh, then 
uh, extreme tiredness yeah loss of heavy blow we can get the extreme tiredness uh, this kind of changes in our body during the irregular periods uh, then remedy is how can i give to my client the practicing regular yoga daily should the regular yoga this kind of asanas we should follow then maintain the healthy weight and the healthy lifestyle uh, eat healthy foods healthy fruits and all daily take vitamin c and all um then the coriander leaf fennel seeds uh, pineapple then the spices ginger tea uh, this kind of remedies i will give to my client uh, thank you ma'am thank you so much okay ma'am very good thank you ma'am thank good you presentation sir. just try and show with some pictures you know it, it makes the presentation look more attractive yeah ma'am you already told no only four or five slides is enough that's why yeah. i took only five slides ha, no, no, five slides are good and very crisp i really like it uh, but uh -huh. put put one or two pictures in this okay. especially the yoga asanas so because uh -huh. when we are presenting yoga asanas either we show by doing it or by showing some pictures you know like akriti did you know some asanas were put into pictures so just that uh, that will bring much more clarity That's okay ma'am sure and next time i will very very good yeah okay ma'am thank very you very crisply written good pointers and good okay. job done yeah okay next time i will add the, this one sure. also absolutely uh -huh. i'll give you many presentations <laughs> okay ma'am sure <laughs> okay guys did you already uh, ma'am can you hear me ma'am Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Okay, ma'am. Okay. I'll share my screen. Sure. I'm on mute again, so in case. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can see your screen. Uh, you can put it on slideshow. Yeah, very nice. The whole page is looking very good. so my topic is uh, postpartum depression in women so uh, yeah so this is a synopsis of my uh, uh, assignment like first one is research on the disease or problem then what are the asanas and pranayama that are helpful and how body changes over time and how will you sell the study to your clients so first topic uh, first uh, sub subdivision is research on the disease or problem so postpartum depression ppd it is a type of uh, depression that uh, every women and men um uh, suffer uh, after having a baby birth and um, uh, this depression is most uh, commonly experienced and uh, affected in women uh, more than in men and um, as you all know that being a first time parent is uh, as exciting and uh, it is also uh, the same uh, at the same time it is also a worrying experience that you have to um, encounter a lot of uh, postpartum depression and uh, mood swings and anxiety and um, all those kind of uh, negative emotions also so uh, some of the um, symptoms uh, which include are like extreme sadness loneliness severe mood swings frequent crying spells so these are some of the um, common um, uh, uh, you know postpartum depression uh, symptoms and uh, during this period of time people also experience hormonal physical emotional financial and social changes especially after having a baby uh, especially when uh, you are uh, i mean like before having a baby you are like very independent on your choices and uh, in the lifestyle that you are living and you do not um, take into the worry of um, uh, of anybody uh, like whether to raise them or uh, to to provide um, something for your family or something i mean your decisions and your uh, actions may be like independent but after having a baby um, you will uh, feel like every action and every decision that you make in your life is going to be connected with your uh, kid with your baby so uh, that these are some of the emotional changes uh, which happened during postpartum depression uh, okay so what are the types of postpartum depressions uh, the common types so there are three three types here first one is postpartum blues or baby blues postpartum depression and the third one is postpartum psychosis so postpartum blues or baby blues are like a very common um, uh, depression type which affects nearly 50 to 75% of the women during after delivery 
so um, this includes like frequent and prolonged bouts of crying with uh, for no apparent reason or uh, sadness or anxiety so there is no reason for a woman to cry after delivery but uh, they keep doing that because of postpartum blues and uh, this usually happens within uh, the first week like one to four days after the delivery and uh, this us- uh, this condition will subside within few weeks after your uh, uh, delivery uh, procedure is over next one is postpartum depression so this is the very most common type of depression experienced by most people and uh, it, it is far more a serious condition than a baby blue so it is a little severe when compared to baby blue uh, uh, type of uh, depression and this uh, usually um, uh, you know like um, um include symptoms like uh, frequent crying irritability uh, exhaustion and uh, inability to take care of your child and it will range from mild to severe um, and it may happen within a week of delivery and it will gradually um, grow um, uh, within like one or two years like uh, within one to two years after having a baby you will feel a lot of uh, um, you know depression anxiety mood swings and um, irritation uh, you will feel like you you are, are incapable of taking care of uh, another uh, uh, um, you know uh, living being and um, Uh, whether you whatever you're doing is right or wrong you you will be in a confusion state and uh, this symptom will last for several months and uh, treatment usually includes psychotherapy and antidepressants in this case uh, now the third type is a little more uh, a severe condition and it may also lead to like um, you know um, uh, life threatening decisions uh, which is uh, like postpartum psychosis so it is an extremely severe form of postpartum depression and requires emergency medical attention this condition is rarely uh, relatively rare affecting only one in 1000 people after delivery so as it says so the symptoms generally include uh, like um, agitation a lot of confusions feelings of hopelessness and shame insomnia paranoid thoughts delusions hallucinations hyperactivity rapid speech or mania like mental uh, health issues so so yeah now uh, the uh, now let us see the elaborate uh, symptoms of each of the depression types so uh, for postpartum blues or baby blues you will experience mood swing anxiety sadness irritability feeling overwhelmed crying reduced concentration appetite problems and trouble in sleeping whereas in postpartum depression you will also feel uh, mood swings excessive crying and um, uh, you know the self uh, withdrawal from your friends and family uh, inability to stay asleep a uh, lot of fatigue you will experience a lot of high and lows in your emotions either you will be extremely excited or you will be like totally depressed and down feeling of uh, guilt hopelessness and uh, irritability and anger sometimes even uh, recurrent thoughts of death side can also happen in postpartum depression case um another interesting uh, symptom is like thoughts of harming yourself for your baby so this is one symptom which you can uh, uh, experience uh, during a postpartum depression case and now in postpartum psychosis you will experience confusion disorientation obsessive We lost your voice, sir. Not able to hear you. Aggressive in postpartum psychosis. We lost your voice in between. Could not hear the last slide. Oh, sorry, ma'am. The internet is uh... no problem. Just the postpartum psychosis. Yeah, I think that part was left. Okay, in postpartum psychosis, you will again uh, feel a lot of confusion, disorientation. obsessive thoughts hallucination sleep disturbances uh, excessive energy and agitation paranoid thoughts and attempts to harm yourself and your baby but here in this case the intensity of the emotions and the symptoms that you are feeling will be a little aggressive and uh, excessive when compared to postpartum depression so 
uh, now we are uh, getting into the second uh, uh, subcategory which are the asanas and pranayama which are helpful for overcoming postpartum depression um first one is uttana shishosana shisho, shishosana which is like extended puppy pose next one is pigeon pose the third one is veerabhadrasana variation to warrior pose to and um, we also have kapalapati pranayama which is a skull shining uh, pranayama pose and then yoga nidra savasana with yoga nidra meditation so uh, these poses are actually helpful in uh, you know um, uh, maintaining a, a proper uh, mental balance in um, people suffering from depression uh, especially during postpartum uh, depression in women so these poses will help you uh, relax your uh, muscles your um, uh, hormones your internal organs and it will uh, help you to maintain that balance in um, hormone levels because um, during postpartum depression the depression phase it's mainly the hormones which play uh, a vital role in bringing about these uh, anxiety mood swing and all these um, uh, negative energy in your uh, negative thoughts in your body or negative changes in our body so meditation uh, pranayama and uh, few helpful poses will help us overcome the depression phase so uh, the third third subdivision will be like how body changes over your time so it uh, mainly helps to uh, uh, lower the stress hormone cortisol which is responsible for depression in our body so it will help to uh, lower the this particular hormone and pranayama practice is like um, a life saver which uh, will uh, prevent you from getting uh, anxious um, angry or uh, you know um, very um, Uh, d- uh, disrupted um, when you have a very disrupted interrupted uh, thought process and yoga nidra is a very excellent uh, relaxation technique and it is an excellent uh, tool i would say for uh, people suffering from depression because it is like a process where you uh, lie down in savasana pose and you uh, close your eyes and you start meditating and you will uh, start visualizing um you know whatever uh, wishes that you want to come uh, that uh, what you want yourself to experience or you want uh, something in your life so that is a very very um, uh, relaxing um, um process and uh, it will also help in uh, increasing uh, sorry removing anxiety and uh, elevating your mood and also regulating the hormone levels in your body the next one is like uh, the rhythmic breathing practices especially the pranayama and the meditative relaxation practices both coupled together will induce a sense of calm well being stress tolerance and mental focus which um, many women after postpartum will uh, find it difficult to um, you know uh, handle the mental focus the uh, inability to focus on any particular work that you that they are doing or um, uh, any task which they want uh, to be accomplished whether it is going to be taking care of the baby or uh, with related to their work if they are uh, working or even small household duties which they want to accomplish so that focus is uh, uh, that focus will be a lot in trouble and uh, meditation and uh, breathing practices coupled together will help them overcome this uh, issue and it will also help in minimizing depression anxiety stress and rumination so uh, what are all the other benefits uh, that is how does your body changes over time so initial benefits will uh, would uh, include increased calmness decreased anxiety and depression reduced irritability and anger increased energy uh, lowered blood pressure uh, mental tension is reduced and uh, a highly relaxed uh, mindset whereas long term benefits would include better mental and physical health better energy levels and self esteem which a uh, women um, you know really struggle to uh, bring uh, to elevate it especially after having a baby their self esteem is very much in trouble and they feel to you know like uh, they feel they have lost it or they do not have any self esteem and it also helps in pain management women after delivery will experience a lot of um, physical changes in their body with uh, with regards to their health and one such um, important thing is uh, pain in every part of their body especially their spine their uh, knees 
their bones every in ne- their neck and every part of the body so uh, in, uh, i mean long term um, uh, practicing of yoga and uh, meditation and uh, pra- uh, pranayama will help them uh, in pain management which includes back joint uh, joint pain due to arthritis and uh, carpal uh, sorry carpal passage disorder it also helps to de- uh, deal with the pms post menstrual uh, syndrome and all its symptoms be it insomnia irritability discomfort depression or, or headaches it also boosts metabolism helps manage weight better tones the body improves sleep cycle uh, one thing which women face after delivery is that uh, they are not able to maintain or manage their uh, sorry reduce or manage their weight so a long term usage a long term practice a practice of yoga will help them uh, to manage their weight better and research has shown that women who habitually practice yoga tend to have better sex lives so uh, also uh, women might feel a little uh, you know down uh, about their own uh, sexuality or uh, uh, you know they will have a um, a very uh, they will take a back stage after having a babies so uh, this will also uh, tend to improve uh, by habitual practice of yoga and then women who practice yoga during or after breast cancer especially when you encounter any uh, health related disorders uh, you will um, likely to experience less pain after your treatment when uh, when you are on a uh, regular uh, practitioner of yoga and also regular yoga massages uh, the internal organs improves the immune system and body's ability to prevent and fight diseases so it will help you to increase improve your immune uh, system and uh, how will you sell this uh, study to your clients so this is the final thing so how will i do this first and foremost i will uh, get in touch with my uh, very close circle which is my family and friends and i will um, you know uh, explain to them about whatever i'm going to do and uh, like uh, invite them to join my uh, journey like if the, if anyone facing anyone um, experiencing these kind of troubles can uh, definitely join me in this journey and i will help them to uh, you know get recovered from it next one is going to be community groups for example now i'm uh, staying in an apartment and here we have an enclosed community uh, here and so next um, uh, step would be like to um, attract uh, the community groups uh, which are uh, close by and ask them uh, like uh, i mean uh, market to them our uh, uh, my product and ask them to like uh, come and uh, experience it if they really want it uh, if they are really in need of it next one is through social media like facebook instagram whatsapp and twitter i will post some um, um, uh, like uh, the therapy sessions that i'm going to be giving or uh, the the coaching session that i'm going to be giving uh, giving and if anyone is interested they can come and uh, attend it third one is i mean fourth one is going to be free classes where people can experience what uh, the uh, what they are going to be getting it they can have a glimpse of uh, what is going to happen in the duo course and uh, if they are okay and comfortable with it then they can continue with the process so uh, one or two free classes can be provided the fifth one is going to be like uh, to explain to them about all the benefits that one can attain through the practice and uh, we can also post some relevant pictures and slogans in social groups regarding the uh, you know the coaching that we are going to provide so that is it very well done thank you ma'am good explanation and i really like that chart where it shows that stages of postpartum depression yeah very well done thank you ma'am very good and the cover picture is very good thank you that it itself brings a lot of calmness into the entire process so good I... job done by all of you actually uh, uh, having known that i am not sure how many of you have given presentation earlier akriti i know had done that and generally used to do that in my hr classes also so she might he has done that already but both of you for the first time i think it's a wonderful presentation very good job really impressive uh, 
uh, it's just that when we are taking when we are giving presentations uh, like you know rati has used uh, only the pointers and the explanation was done by her this is how we should be giving presentations so presentations are not supposed to carry a lot of uh, material in ppts you need to speak a lot show pictures you know show diagrams so that you know people are able to understand and then try and explain those do diagrams and the pointers yourself so that might but that actually creates the interest of the audience especially okay. especially in offline presentations online yes it is fine that because we are in the distance mode we do not have really that eye to eye contact happening you are not standing in front of me so all these things are happening here these kind of presentations can work really well that's perfectly okay but offline mode when see imagine now with these presentations whatever you have shown today you are going to a corporate or maybe a school or college to sell your entire life coaching sessions so how are you going to address the audience so right starting from how you introduce yourself talking about yourself first it, because all of you missed that slide where you have not spoken about self right it's very important that first sliders once after you have given the topic you start talking about yourself that who i am what i am going to do this is my presentation on this topic and all those things it's very important right a very brief introduction because people would love to know who rati is you know what gayatri is doing in their life how akriti is actually into this particular uh feel right so they would like to know about your details and then you start the presentation i'm going to bring to your notice about all these things that we have encountered how my yoga practice has really helped me do these things so little bit see uh, a presentation means personalizing the entire experience it's like a storytelling how you tell story uh, imagine you telling a story to your kids how do you start that story right once upon a time and then blah blah then good things about then the moral of the story all those things happens so similarly when we are doing a presentation you are actually selling your uh, skills your competencies or your knowledge whatever you know so if you do it in a storytelling way it will bring much more better effect on the audience who is listening to you right so bring some personalized experiences that with one of the client we did this particular exercise after postpartum and she felt very very good about this particular thing right so some of the or if you have not done it for the client talk about yourself that during my postpartum days we did these exercises these three exercises brought me out of the depression i was never there into that category you know things like that can actually help you out Uh, in connecting with see the audience needs to connect with you every time when you are giving a presentation how this connection is going to be built with some real life examples some stories that you want to share you know uh, if you have not experienced anything yourself or with your client some celebrity story somebody you know uh, maybe you know who is a popular can be a movie star can be anybody else can be a player or anybody for that matter who people would but uh, no connect with more so share their stories a little bit and then you know you can easily talk about that how yoga and meditation and how other relaxation techniques can help you out to come out of anything that you are suffering from but very well done research is good asana spoken about is very very detailed good i was surprised at how akriti research about these things because she didn't attend the yoga classes and uh, lovely lovely things so good job okay so you want to take a 5 minutes break then we start the class yeah then we continue with the presentation yesterday and try to skip it right so take 5 minutes break it's 10:20 let's come back at 2025 and then we'll start the topic we'll talk okay. about tools and techniques of is based on okay Go ahead, take a break and come back.
You're back, everyone. Let's start. Okay. So yesterday we discussed about coaching styles. Now, after coaching styles, what generally happens is we try and select the tools and techniques that can go along with our practice of life coaching. So like we were discussing yesterday when Gayatri was asking this question that what kind of tools and techniques are generally utilized by maximum life coaches, not necessarily pertaining to whether we are doing yoga or meditation or just relaxation techniques. There can be different tools and techniques that can brought in into the entire experience of giving help or as a coach. So coaching tool is basically something that you use your you any any tool that you can use in your coaching practice. So all those things, the presentation that you give today is basically talking about the tools that can help you come out of the diseases, postpartum, or you know, depression, and all those things. So that's very important. Another thing as a life coach, uh, which is required as a tool or technique is listening, right? which none of you have spoken about in your presentation, but listening actually brings a lot of deep connection between you and your client. Once that is done, there is a different kind of an attachment that is formed between the both parties. And with that, only you will be able to understand what exactly is missing during the entire experience where people are not able to even understand what they are going through. So listening, active listening is very, very important tool that can be used. Then second point talks about here is how you deliver your coaching practice. So what are the tools that can help you deliver your coaching practice can be anything, whether you're using a pen and a paper, you are using these online techniques, Zoom classes or Meet, whatever things that you're using. How many other, uh, you know, relaxation things that you have with you. For example, people come to you, you give them a totally different kind of an experience by giving them, you know, uh, maybe a spa facility, if you have that kind of a space with you, uh, along with yoga, that can also become a good technique, good tool. So similarly, these kind of things, anything that brings a very beautiful experience to your client and depending upon your own budget and the facility that you have, what kind of things you can bring in can become the tool for giving coaching practices. So like, you know, these, guys, these days, a lot of people have... Uh, created a different kind of an experience with life coaching for people who call themselves wellness coach. So what they do is generally wellness coach helps them in uh, losing their weight of the clients, right? losing their weight, uh, instilling that kind of a thing where people can take care of their bodies really well. Uh, especially, you know, a lot of women, uh, it's a very good point that Gayatri has written a presentation that uh, women, as a woman, we were never told how to enjoy uh, sex in our lives. You know, we generally have been, it's a taboo talking about sex in, with females. And most of the women don't even know how to use different kind of things, how they can make their body really happy, especially after giving childbirth. Because the body gets into so many changes. There are so many physical marks and, you know, stretch marks. Uh, cesarean marks, all those things happens in your body that you stop loving your body. So that sexual experience is not about having sex with anybody else, but also enjoying the experience in your own body and loving whatever you have. So those feelings have to be included. Those things can be included. And for that, what kind of tools and techniques that you can use, right? So maybe, you know, giving them body positive, uh, body positivity uh, lectures, body positive images, body positive spa feelings, you know, so all these things can be included in your coaching practice as a coach if it can be possible. So similarly, there are different kind of things that can be used. So let's talk about coaching techniques now. So there are different techniques through which you can get to know your clients a little bit more 
once you get to know what are you going to do those things uh, do with that knowledge that you have acquired how are you going to provide them solutions what kind of techniques that can be included into the entire procedures so let's talk about them one by one so number one is motivational interviewing so let me ask you this question first what do you think that what motivational interviewing can be focusing on the client's strength hmm. uh, so that we can use uh, his or her strength or passion or hobbies uh, to cope up with problems hmm. okay prati gayatri what do you think what motivational interviewing can be like um, like uh, if you can ask them what what is their uh, interest in and uh, what is something like uh, that is stopping them from uh, uh, you know achieving that interest and then uh, in what kind of ways they need the motivation to in order to achieve it hmm something like that okay what are the strengths as i need we what are the strength our strength then hmm okay we explore in that strength is fine so suppose now you know one of you uh, let's see a mock session right so suppose i come to you and i say that i am your i need your services as a life coach right mm-hmm. i am going through uh, say a you know stress level very high stress level mm-hmm. that's the problem that i come with and i want you to do interviewing you, know, you ask me questions about why i am feeling depression and all that so what are the questions that you are going to ask forget motivational question just normal interview how what will you do how will you ask me questions what are the diagnosis you are going to take so well, let's start with rati then we'll do with good guys being okay ah and then think about it what are the questions that you can ask somebody what are the experiences you have in that yeah okay mm-hmm. what are the experiences what else then then what are the advantages and if there any problem how can over over the how can over the over them that problem overcome that problem okay. overcome that problems um mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. Mm, um then the future plans ma'am okay future plans. The future plans ah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay good yeah all right so gayatri what do you think what is the kind of questions you are going to ask i'm uh, like uh... if someone is experiencing depression and when they come to me stress. my first question Not depression very high level of stress okay very high level of stress okay yeah so when they come to me i will first ask them like uh, what is the kind of uh, stress that you are experiencing and why do you really think you want a coaching from a um, from a different person like uh, like uh, what are the factors that are causing your stress and why do you really want to come out of it and then they will explain right that i'm facing these kind of issues uh, because of this these are the end results of my stress so in order to uh, you know uh, eliminate that from my life i want a coaching session or a coaching therapy like that they will explain right and based on that then we can inquire about uh, their background their lifestyle and uh, their their work uh, yeah good okay all right so akriti now your turn what is the kind of questions you are going to ask ma'am uh, so after building a good rapport with you as a client hmm. uh, i will ask i will inquire about what is the cause of that stress if there is any uh, family problem uh, during stress is there any physical changes you feel Mm-hmm. 
any professional related problem relationship problem or any mental status that you feel you feel uh, very worry or restless and so that i can find out what the client actually needs and for this i will also ask if there is any coping mechanism you have if there is anything you like to do like yeah. your hobbies or passion so that i can uh, work on that and yes ma'am good yeah it's very good so you know when you want to know your client really well or anybody who has come to you for that session you know they won't answer your questions in a very direct manner and sometimes you won't be able to ask them questions directly right for example if i i have come for the stress kind of thing and maybe my stress is because of my spouse right my husband is not treating me well and that is the reason why i am having this stress but you as a life coach cannot ask me these questions directly right my husband is sitting here and he is laughing at me saying this right so this is you cannot ask this question to anyone directly right so how you are going to do motivational interviewing is you are going to indirectly ask these questions right by giving motivation to them in that you are very much interested in knowing about their life what do they do so you know you can ask such questions like so how do you spend the entire day at your home right how do you spend your time with your kids how do you spend your time with your family members how do you spend time when you are in office what is your relationship with your colleagues uh, how do you spell or how do you elaborate your relationship with your husband or with your in laws right so stress what see because you are also aware about stress already you know what kind of problems that can occur what are the causes that can cause stress so you know it already you just need to find out about this person what is triggering stress in this person and what is the cause hence you are going to ask motivational interviewing questions related to entire areas of their life personal relationship professional everything and then once you get to know the hints you will come out directly uh, out of their see why you need to let them speak a lot and you speak less is because you want to know more about them people usually uh, without thinking speak so much and you get to know what is exactly missing in their story you gather those points and then we start talking about those things right also motivational interviewing is about bringing good experiences of the people for example if somebody has spoken good things about their childhood that they were very happy during that time they had a wonderful time with their parents so you then ask them more questions so that you know you can give them this experience that the more they stay with happy memories there are chances that this person will get out of the stress or depression very easily so motivational interviewing is a technique that is generally used in coaching sessions by life coaches across all the levels so that you can increase the level of interaction between you and your clients the higher the interaction the higher the areas of your their life you pick up you talk about in this interviewing technique there are chances that your diagnosis of their problem would be much much better we will do mock sessions the day when we have all the people joining the class we will try and include after these tools and techniques so that you can include all these things in your sessions when we'll do mock sessions the second coaching techniques as i've already told you is listening so listening is the most important thing that can happen to anyone see most of the people you will see people who uh, you know choose to die by suicide what they do is generally they write it down that they have nobody who can listen to them you know most of these people have this particular problem that people are not able to listen to them or they have no one who can share so at one point you can go to somebody and ask you what is your problem the person there are chances that if the person is in high level of anxiety stress or depression that person will turn you away you please go i don't want to talk and that's when you do not have to stop somebody has told you turn away go away is not the right thing right you have to still persuade you have to still persist doing and talking to that person 
till the level and it's not just as a life coach it is for everyone you have in your family in your friends you feel that the person has suddenly changed there are symptoms that you can see the person has secluded themselves they are not laughing anymore uh, and and the highest you know level of problematic thing is basically that most patients of depression do not show any sign of depression till the time they reach that suicide level right they are still laughing with their friends and family sometimes it is in very extreme cases when the person gets secluded and they do not want to participate in day to day activities but in most cases they are very happy they look happy to other people they talk nicely or they dress up nicely all these things happen and suddenly the person then you know take up this step of losing out on their lives so it's very important that whenever you pick up those symptoms anywhere just you know, give them time listen to them because most of the time venting out is so important you have something in your brain you have something in your mind you have stored it for so long you just want to take it out and most people uh, who go through depression or uh, bipolar uh, mental symptoms they do not even know the reason why something is happening because it's not in their control right something is having something some activity is happening in brain they have lost control over it so it's very important that we as a life coach bring their control back into their lives good thing is to start with very very mild very beautiful relaxation and meditation techniques take them for the walks do your sessions while you are having walk it's getting to know them a little bit more but you know when you do such kind of things or maybe you know do these kind of therapies have that kind of an experience where people are enjoying your company take them for a coffee take them out bring that kind of things in their life so that you can just listen to them first of all right so that's one of the important techniques third technique we use in uh, coaching also technique and it's also skill that is required in life coaching we also talked about it is collaboration right collaboration people generally believe that collaboration is something where you know the interaction is really happening good between two people the client and you but it does not really collaboration collaboration is something where both the parties are equally involved into the entire process generally what happens is that you know uh, life coaches feel that they know all the things and they start giving the solutions without getting the collaboration and cooperation of the other party right instead of they listening more they talk more they tell more they are into that habit that i have the solution let me talk more i'll start giving you solutions right away but that's not the case life coaching is about less talking and listening to things more giving the solutions only at the right time when you know the entire story really well other than that whatever solutions you are giving without listening to the entire story without getting into the detailed diagnosis without knowing the entire thing in proper manner there are chances that your the solutions or your outcomes that you are expecting is not going to come at percent so it's very important that you get to know the person really really well get involved into the entire process collaborate take their feedback on time to time basis that okay i gave you this asana to perform how did you feel about this asana what was your experience so you know this is when the person will be completely into the sessions with you similarly for any other technique or any other tool that you are using other than yoga asanas can be relaxation it can be any other form of techniques reiki like we talked about it yesterday or any other tool for that matter so you need to just have a collaboration feedback their reflection on how they felt the entire experience on time to time basis do not wait ki teen mahina ho gaya then i'll take the feedback it's very important that in every session you take the feedback and know their experiences of because when they speak about their experiences when they share their feedback about anything that you have given them as a solution that means they have tried to do this they have experienced that solution and the more they talk about that solution that you have offered to them that means they are getting to know their experience ki okay wow sometimes what happens is that suppose you told me ki perform these two asanas because you are highly stressed i perform these asanas and i don't notice any change in me but when you are asking me this question 
that how did you feel after performing those two asanas and when i'm explaining then i will realize that yes you know this is the experience that i also had my stress level had in decreased a little bit since then so this is how you do your collaboration with your clients now making good use of time very importantly right you are spending 45 50 minutes you know generally the sessions are going to last that much only people generally start with 30 minutes time period but usually it takes 45 minutes to do a one proper session with your client it make it very structured so that you know that you this 45 minutes after 45 minutes you need to know something at least in the first few sessions it's very important that you get to know something about the person whatever has triggered any kind of a problem physical problems still easier to get to know but mental problems people who are going through the phases of different kind of uh, mental traumas it's it gets very difficult especially during the cases where uh, you know something is wrong with the person and the person has no reason whatsoever why it is happening wrong most of the time with these people the child abuse either mental or physical has created that kind of thing right. so it's very important that you get to know uh, i tell you my example of somebody i have been uh, dealing with in last 6 months with we are uh, into this coaching session since 6 months and even then uh, i could not figure out that there is some problem of the child abuse that has happened and suddenly very recently during one of the session it just triggered he just said something and it just came to my mind that yes that that is the cause why we are not able to deal with this problem right now is because of the child abuse that happened he is now 44 and imagine the child abuse that he is carrying from the age of 6 is bothering him even now and we could not figure it out because he's he's so relaxed most of the time he is so good and he believes in spirituality he's a wonderful guy all those things are happening but still uh, there was something which was missing and we were not able to find out that thing and suddenly it triggered right so you won't know what will trigger when unless until unless your sessions are very well structured right try and get to know about these things in the initial stages because uh, people when we become adult we get into the habit of showing something else to people outside Uh, when you talk to a child a child will come across as a innocent you know whatever is going on in their mind and their heart they will speak to you but with adults it's a very difficult story it's a very complex mind the more complexity they bring in the, their mind they don't share all the things with uh, life coaches even in coaching sessions they come for the session they are paying you still they won't share entire things so then it becomes very difficult that what are the questions that you are asking which is triggering all those things so that will come with practice but when we will do mock sessions i'll give you the list of questions also that you can ask initial stages which will bring you the right kind of results right then yeah yes ma'am uh, like uh, how many sessions will a uh, can a candidate take in order to like uh, you know There get uh, no count of that totally depends upon when the person starts feeling good okay so i have few uh, clients who have been with me for 5 years now and not because they want to do the session they just that they love talking they come back do some relaxation technique some meditation techniques and then go away right so because uh, in the initial few sessions they felt very good about the entire experience hence they kept coming back for something so there is one person who does it twice a year that's all but he does every every year will come and he'll say that these two time periods i'll have to come back i'll do this meditation i'll do this so coaching technique and then we do that so totally depends upon your relationship i generally don't break my relationship with any of the clients generally usually you know they are either on the whatsapp they are either mailing me or calling sometimes just to know how are you and that's all so total experience is see when people get to know that your whole idea is not just to earn money out of them but to help them totally truly that's when people are attached to you for the entire lifetime trust me and that will happen with most of the clients ma'am what if in case like uh, if the person is very annoying that uh, uh, like uh, like they might have a problem in their life 
Mm. Also, they want to like annoy um, someone. Uh, I mean, if the life coach, for example, I'm telling. Mm. Like, uh, by for example, a man, he's like constantly calling you, and if he if he wants to constantly talk to you. Mm. So, how to handle those kind of things? Be very firm that you cannot answer their calls all the time. Very very firm. See, uh, as I said earlier, also that there are chances that opposite sex will get attracted to you a lot of times. right not just because of your physical beauty but because you are listening to them you are giving them that time and nobody has given them you will get that kind of proposal also many people will fall in love with you for sure right but that falling in love is just a process which is going to happen because you are into that uh, area where you are giving them comfort where you are giving them care so that two things are, are there how you have to cut down on entire thing is first learn to detach it's very important because as a life coach you also start feeling attached with some people so that's very important that learning detachment is very important think in your mind do meditation which is detaching meditations time to time basis because whatever you are listening you are actually storing in your brain somewhere right just store in your brain for the process of helping them now that's all initial phases you might face this difficulty you will get emotional you will get that kind of an attachment which will affect you slowly you will have to learn to detach that this is just the third party you are listening this entire procedure as third party you are not participating in this entire thing and you are just helping this person out to get out of this second thing is be very very firm that you are handling them as a life coach and you are giving them just 45 minutes of your day that's all the sessions are already structured in advance we get to know unless there is some emergency that they are feeling suicidal or they have that problem which is going on or something they really need to talk to you just then you can give them extra time other than that it's very important that being firm not you cannot be rude but you yes you can be a little aggressive and you can show them your firmness if you're not interested in their life but some people might get confused between uh, that um, um like uh, that uh, softness which we are like showing to them that is like we, we want to listen to softness See, we are soft people we are sensitive people that's why we are life coach right somewhere uh, you know uh, this particular uh, what do you call it trait of our personality that we are caregivers that we love to talk to people we help them Uh, is yes an advantage as as well, as well as a disadvantage also, but in your mind that clarity has to come that you are not going to attach get attached to anyone. Right? Like uh, you are uh, just helping them. As you told, uh, like when we want to detach ourselves from them, yeah. Yeah. what if they find it like uh, very rude or uh, or this person no, is like on. Even if they find rude, what is the harm? Okay. See, your job is to take care of their problems, whatever they have come to you. if they find you rude or aggressive sometimes it's okay don't feel as i said don't feel attached to the entire process and feeling attached to the process that you are you know that you are there to help them and for what reasons you are going to help them whatever they are feeling about you is not your problem the result and outcome that you want is that this person will come out of this particular thing whatever they are facing whether it is depression whether it is stress whether it is diabetes yeah. anything for that matter you are just helping them come out of it and that's the only goal you have correct once we are clear about our objective and goal we will work towards that how the other person is taking it is not your problem it becomes our problem when we start getting attached and the moment you know that you are start getting you, you have started to get attached to that person it can be of any sex it can be a female for a female also it can be a male for you also it can be an elderly older people also sometimes you start you know relating it with their parents and so you get too much involved into the entire process it can be a kid also so any man for that matter you know that your outcome is this you don't want to get attached to this person because uh, see psychologists life coaches and uh, personal coaches they face this thing very very often that people will get attached to you purely because you are giving them time and they have never bought that time with anybody else simply so you need to understand that this entire process the more you will be attached to that person the more problems you are bringing for them as well so maybe if you need to become a little rude and firm initially start with very first day 
very first day tell them that your sessions are going to be 45 minutes twice in a week twice in a week whatever way just tell that's why i'm saying bring the structure make very good use of time when you do structure it looks little professional though you will be dealing with personal problems but it will still bring that kind of professionalism that is required in life coaching and then yes you start slowly getting to get away from your problems i'm also like um, how do we charge like each session initially like you are the better judge of your own things Okay. You need to know your skills and strengths really well. If you feel that you need to charge really good, be firm on your payments. Very firm. Don't offer discounts at any point in time. Even if you have to say no to one or two people, that's okay. See, initial days, me what looks good is that uh, if a person is saying, suppose you're charging one thousand rupees per session, right? And the person comes to you and they tell you different stories, all kind of stories you will hear. Even if the person will have good budget, they are earning well. Still, they will tell you story and not earning. I have this problem, and all these things are happening in my life. Whatever you know, they will come and tell you this problem. Monetarily, they feel that life coaches are just there to listen to them, and they don't want to pay to them, right? So I don't generally take up those people at all, unless I know yes, this person is really, really not well in terms of monetary payments. Then you can give them some discount, unless. and you know it really well otherwise you don't you should not just refuse it's okay because uh, sometimes people what they do is they take the session they take the coaching and all and then yeah. they will say like what you have done why should i pay you so much correct yeah uh, something like uh, i mean wow. always uh, take in advance that's another thing always charge in advance yes absolutely first three sessions please deposit this much money and then we'll start refuse it's okay see initially once you refuse people will start giving you that imagine going to a doctor will the doctor ever reduce any kind of prices for them and it's not because they don't believe in charity it's purely because they feel, they know that their skills are required by people and they have that capability of helping you out simple as that right? if i am going to apollo and i'll say that i am very uh, poor and i can't pay you as your fees as a doctor why will i go to apollo then i'll go to a sarkari hospital right that's very simple simplistic fund of life see money and currency is very much related with spiritual life of us people believe that if you're spiritual you need to do more kindness more compassion but it's it's not the case whenever you are doing something see it's an energy exchange that is happening if i am giving you something as a life coach this is my energy that i am passing on to you and i have acquired this energy of my feeling calm all the time i'm relaxed i'm listening to you and giving that much of time my skills that i have acquired has a cost to it and that cost you will have to pay right it's a, a energy exchange that is happening from my energy i am charging you this much fees that's all if you cannot pay me because of whatever reasons then give something back in exchange any exchange has to happen and that exchange can be you know this person doing something some favor to you bringing something for you you know you have some work maybe in government department he or she is helping you out with that so that kind of an exchange can happen but most of the time money is much more easier purely because you also earn you know you want to earn you want to earn your living if you want to create a career out of it so never feel ashamed of asking whatever you deserve And when once you know that you have fixed up a price, don't reduce that price for anyone. Only in extreme cases, just do that. That's all. You no, know, we have somebody who was. Uh, I have somebody who was having paralysis attack, and I knew that this person was not earning, and she was all alone. Her husband was also not really a very good earning member. So I just helped her out in less prices. But later on, once she started earning, she came back to her own self. she started paying it on her own without me asking for it so you know when people benefit from your sessions trust me that they also carry that burden ki yeah we did not pay that person really well somewhere they conscious they know that they got really good help they got treatment or whatever you want to call it you know the healing the therapy so they will come back to you and they will surely pay you. कुछ मिलेंगे, will not pay, that's okay, that's part of the life. 
that kind of people will also come okay ma'am got it then next is establishing teams so it's very important if especially in group therapies or in group life coaching sessions it's very important that you establish teams between people and then carry this entire techniques of coaching with them right Uh, the teams can be established in terms of if you have your own team members who are helping you out in life coaching sessions, then also form teams. Or otherwise, in people, uh, suppose you are going to deal with a yoga session or a coaching session of fifty people, divide and establish teams in them with people who have some common causes or common problems. That will really help your coaching technique sessions to go really, really well. Instead of just going on and on with fifty people all together at once, but then emotional intelligence we talked about it. I think number of times during our sessions without EQ, without your emotional intelligence, like you know these things that we are discussing, when to detach, when to feel attached, when to get to know more about people, that emotional level where to show how much is very important. Your being emotionally balanced is very important. If you know. that something is still triggering some emotions in you don't get involved into the life coaching process yet right so it's very important to heal yourself first heal yourself first means so that that you know you are out of that emotional uh, sensitivity because sometimes what happens is something has happened in our life something can be anything that causes that stress or you know emotions to flow very easily so first you have to heal those things in you and then only you will get into this process of becoming a life coach because uh, if you have those emotions in you which can be triggered by anybody else's story or their experiences that means you are not doing a job of a life coach properly a little bit emotions a little bit sensitivity is good right sometimes sometimes yes you feel that tearful uh, experience when somebody is sharing their life story and some life stories can be really really difficult some life stories can be very very bad in terms of how their experiences have been and that can trigger emotions because we are all humans right ultimately so that is fine but you need to know how to balance your emotions at that point in time and do not show it you are feeling cheerful you are feeling very emotionally attached to them you are being sensitive it's all right that will happen go to toilet take a break go and refresh yourself and come back and then start the session right online may it gets really easy but offline session when somebody is just sitting next to you and they start sharing their story and you feel tearful or you have that tears in your eyes it gets little difficult right so just try and break the session then do something else take a break or do something and then again start the session so emotional intelligence is all about balancing your emotions at what time and balance your emotions is not just sensitive areas but also sometimes uh, people can trigger anger in us also you can feel aggressive you can feel very angry somebody can be really really uh, persistent about something they can ask you one question over and over again keep repeating that same thing over and over again and that can trigger different emotions in you you can feel angry you can feel aggressiveness you feel like shutting the entire person down so things will happen that is why emotion is intense but you stay at your own pace <laughs> you are in control always show that you are in charge of this entire session in communication obviously communication is really good when you are communicating with other other party it's very important that your communication levels happens on a very very good whether it is written communication that you are writing down the pointers that somebody is sharing with you whether it is your verbal communication the communication level has to happen on that base so that communication will plays very very crucial role in the entire coaching session that's why it is a good technique how you can use positively use your communication with that person so maybe you know uh, the language that you know is can play really well if you know that somebody can understand in your mother language they also know the same language then why not talk to them it gives them a different kind of a comfort altogether usually people when come to you they some people really love to talk in english you know they just keep talking english and then you also have to play that kind of a role make them understand those things also going down to their level and communicating is very important 
going down to their level in the sense not just the language part or how good they speak english or hindi or any other language but also uh, maturity level in communication some people are not mature when they talk you know they talk, they still look very childish when they talk or they do not really have that skill of uh, capability of what do you call it defining what their problem is so you have to go down to their level ask them this kind of questions trigger things where they can communicate really well make the entire process look very simple as simple as possible so because you know different kind of people you will deal with some people are really really good in terms of they know what is the problem they'll come to you tell you entire thing and that's all some people because of heavy baggage of emotions won't be able to even explain themselves very really well so for them generally the sessions take lower of time one two three your patience will going to play a crucial role then smart goals so we talked about that thing so setting smart goals is very important technique very important you can use smart goals as a technique you can use clear as a technique any one the goal setting techniques that we spoke about in the first two sessions but goals has to be kept very clear you need to be very clearer about your goals what you need to achieve and the similar thing you need to pass on to the person that these are the th- five things we are going to do once these sessions are over so slowly that person also gets to know that with these life coaching sessions i am going to achieve this much most life coaches fail purely because they do not do goal setting with their clients right they feel or they uh, just tell them that you are going to come out of your problem that's it but how and when you are going to come out of your problem you cannot guarantee that because one person can take two months time one person can take an entire year but once you start having those goals these goals will help you and the other person identify yes that i am on the right path i am actually going through this process of achievement of my goals so fix up short term goals that in 3 months time we will be able to do this much then fix short long term goals that in 6 months to 1 year you are going to come out of it leave the sessions how many sessions they want to attend on the persons you cannot drive that you can just give them a thing for example uh, you know that somebody is in depression right in high level of depression you know that person is actually going through very difficult time so you fix up the goals with this person first for yourself that this is how you want to take the session forward then you sit with the person when they are in that phase when they can listen to you properly give them that these are the goals we have for you these are the timelines that we have for you after 5 months 6 months if they want to discontinue the sessions you just let their parents their family members know that this person wants to discontinue the sessions other than that you can't really do about it so you cannot really force and force these timelines on somebody but you can show it to them initial days is initial 2 months just show them their goals what they can achieve in 1 year 6 months 8 months time see healing of the body and mind takes a lot of time and people don't know that usually because of our medical practitioners they know that they have taken two tablets in three days they can feel better right this entire experience of these tablets and feeling better or injections and feeling better has created this entire scenario of people not being able to heal themselves properly healing through alternative methods or life coaching or because you know again life coaching is coaching is fine you are giving them coaching about something but actually you are helping them heal and healing cannot happen on a physical level it has to happen on physical and spiritual level as well mental and spiritual level as well once that happens and that is why we are studying this emotional practices and yoga therapies that it connects mind body and soul all three things so your focus as a life coach is on all these three mind body and soul you are going to give them timelines as per healings of these three things how much they want to go here and do that with you is totally their call and you let them know in advance that the sessions are going to that much of time at least minimum 6 months has to be given by everyone and 6 months also i'm saying in the frequency where are you giving them at least two sessions in a week minimum it, it need not require you to be there for their then for every day but two weeks I mean, two sessions in a week of forty-five, fifty minutes generally, eight hours are there. 
but that's all, not more than that. Okay, fix that up. Slowly, see, uh, again, how you want to control your sessions, how do you want to control the flow of the sessions, how many sessions you feel that is required for the person, that will come automatically to you once you start practicing it in play life. Initial days, you will have to experiment with some people, right? Giving them more time, sometimes less time, totally depending upon the problems they are facing. Once you know what pace you can handle the case, see, because uh, I am speaking right now because I practiced it for six years. I don't know initial days how and why I did this. But for each one of you, your personality, your style of coaching, the way you want to give uh, help to people might may differ from what I did and how I gave. Because I use multiple techniques. You know, I use Reiki also. I use meditation techniques also. I use yoga also. So for different kind of people, I use different techniques. So hence, my pace was very different. With your techniques, you need to find out what pace you can go on with people, how much time you need to give in order to give them these kind of things. So that's very important. So once you get to know about that, helping with smart goals, you will be able to achieve all that. But please do goal setting and objective setting very, very clearly for yourself. Because otherwise, it will remain very unstructured. The more unstructured you leave your coaching sessions, there are chances the failures will happen. People will never feel satisfied because you do not give them anything that this is what your session, ke baad, this is how you feel like. There is always a balance between two things, immediate relaxation techniques that will help them find out the solutions immediately and long-term healing techniques. So that balance has to be created by you. Now, uh, there is another uh, topic, which is coaching models. So I think we should do it next class because these are a little difficult. Again, it's like, you know, setting goals and creating a style for yourself. So we'll stop the class here at coaching tools and techniques. Right? In techniques also, you can include all these things, you know, the relaxation techniques that we are talking about, any meditation techniques, mantra chanting, mindfulness that we were talking about, yoga, uh, emotional problems, dealings, how you are, you are using psychology as a tool for helping them out, how you are using conditional learning in psychology to help people out of their problems. So all those things you need to study and do in details and you can actually bring them in coaching techniques and tools. that can become your tool. So just can get you know, your arms and ammunitions to fight the war. So this, these techniques can actually help you out in that. Right? Any questions in this? No, ma'am. No questions, Akriti? Understood, Bill? No. What are the techniques you have studied in psychology right now? Ma'am, uh, I have studied mindfulness technique, hmm. uh, Jacobson muscular relaxation technique, uh, light streaming te technique. Which one? Uh, light? Light streaming. Cosmos ray comes from universe and then... Okay, okay, okay. Uh, that one and that in psychology, they are five, four, three, two, one. In emotional care course classes, Achha. ma Okay, ma'am. I was wondering, psychology do not have this. Yeah, emotional care coaching. Okay. Yes, we don't know that uh, one, ma'am. Five, four. That's in their emotional coaching classes. They uh, they did that emotional coaching. You did yoga life coaching. So two courses are different. The life coaching part is common in both. But uh, in emotional care coaching, uh, they tell you about how to deal with emotions of the stress level, anxiety level that is coming out of emotions. So yes, that course is different. You want to go ahead and do that course. It will be very helpful. And both the courses combination, I was actually telling this to sir that, you know, if we can combine both the courses, give them some yoga and meditation, then some emotional care coaching and then life coaching. So these three we can combine and then start. 
that because uh, Usha ma'am who takes this emotional care coaching is a psychologist, very renowned psychologist herself. So she has studied that things. So when you learn from somebody who is a psychologist, then obviously you will learn things about how to do emotional care coaching. Kavita ma'am has already told you about asanas and all that. So these two combination is wonderful for life coaching. So good. Okay. Nice. So you know how to use these techniques now, right? In your life coaching sessions once you become that. We will practice it, right? Maybe one of the classes, maybe next Sunday, we can have mock sessions where I will give you live, live uh, examples of problems and then you take, you ask me the answers, I mean the questions and I'll give you the answers. I become your patient and I'll give you the questions. Yeah. Okay, we will do this mock session. In weekdays, any classes are there, ma'am? Weekdays. Weekdays, we don't take classes. Yeah, I go last for... last time you uh, sent one message, no, ma'am? I yeah. didn't see actually. Last Tuesday, I think. Last Tuesday, no. I think I shared something with you. Okay. And there was just a. What did I share? But I shared something in the group. Which you guys have asked for. So weekdays it gets very difficult uh, because uh, I run my own company. Yeah, yeah sorry. Ma'am, you uh, maybe you said about mindfulness something. For yeah, what? mindfulness training. I mean mindfulness as a motivation, as a meditation technique. So, see, mindfulness can be uh, easily practiced with breathing techniques. For example, when you are focusing on your breath anytime, right? even right now, when we are dealing with these sessions, right now you are attending these classes, the whole focus should be on your breath right now, that you are de deep breathing. Also, uh, when you start deep breathing, your mind's attention goes to the current thing which is happening in front of you. The flow of thoughts have removed, completely gone from your brain. It takes time for mindfulness training to come, but it is very, very easy. Uh, I will try and share. Uh, how do I do that? Mindfulness training. Maybe next Saturday, before we start the class, I will take you through that mindfulness meditation. It takes 10 15 minutes for the stage to come. Because it gets a little longer because if you're experiencing for the first time the flow of thoughts that is happening in your brain takes time but over a period of time when you start practicing mindfulness over and over again what happens is like you know you get into meditative state totally and meditative state is something where uh, like i am doing right now i'm not really boasting about it but whenever i do something i am presently currently in that thing totally so right now I'm not bothered what is happening around me. Even if somebody is just sitting next to me, the whole concentration is on this thing that you are involved with. You do not have any other thoughts going on in your mind. Ki khana kab padega, kaise khayenge, aaj fast hai, what are you going to cook? So all those things are not really bothering your brain at that in time. Right? Generally what happens is usually, for usual human beings, if they have not practiced mindfulness, what happens is even if you are sitting in this class, seven, six, seven thoughts are going on. Something is coming. You know, what will I do today? What is the going? What I'm going to cook today, Sunday? What are the plans? So all those things start coming because you are just in listening mode at this point in time. So you know these things. Slowly, when you start practicing, your focus and concentration increases so very well. And mindfulness techniques are very good for children to increase their focus and attention. And they are wonderful exercises. One very good technique also is mandala exercises, if you can practice that. So if you don't know, if you know about mandala, mandala art therapy also be used as meditation technique. So it's basically oh. a dotted, yeah, you create small dots uh, and start using, I mean, do not have to do a design or something, just put dots and try and create a flower out of those dots. And the moment you start focusing on creating those dots, you will see how much relaxation it is bringing to you. So it, it can become wonderful technique. We can I can show you this technique again in one of the classes. 
uh, you just need a good pointed pen of different colors and then you use this. And once we use this, uh, again, you know, as I said, you know, there are so many, so many techniques, 108 to meditation techniques that we have learned. So 108 meditation techniques, then different relaxation, art therapies, painting, uh, coloring, doodling, all those things can actually help you out. Where your entire focus is concentrating on one piece. For children, there are so many activities which can involve, so, you know, simpler activity like you give them different forms of dal that you cook at home. Dals of, of different colors, right? You have yellow dal and green dal and brown dal. All those dals, just put it in a plate. Combine all those dal together in a plate and give it to your child and tell them segregate these dals as per the color combinations. The amount of time they will take, the focus that will be required to segregate those Pulses will bring that kind of a satisfaction. Ma'am, please, this kind of thought, uh, thought ma'am, thought Sorry. us. Please, please uh, give the uh, details about the techniques, ma'am. We don't know anything, right? You the techniques. My classes thought of is there, no. Uh, thought of is there, no. Please, then that. At least the name and all. We don't know that name and all, actually. See, uh, as I said, you know, that's a different class this, that I run for meditation. So we cannot include all of them. Mandela. What is that? Mandela. Mandala. Yeah, Mandala, Mandala we will do for sure. Yeah, Mandala uh, therapy. Uh, I will uh, show you how to do that. Uh, then painting also, no, ma'am? Uh, for kids. Painting, doodling. As I said, I was just explaining that pulses that you can have. You will use dal, right? The yellow dal, her dal and all those dals at home. If your child Please is really teaches, small. Yeah. So just Please try teach and us, use kind of technique. Yeah, uh -huh. we'll do that. Next Saturday. Sure, Next okay. Saturday we'll do mandala and one relaxation technique. Mm -hmm. And we'll start okay. with us. All right. Okay, that's all for today then. Uh, okay. Yes, ma'am. Nice session, ma'am. Thank you. Very nice session. Can we share our PPTs in groups so that ha, we can I'll share have... the PPTs. I'm so sorry. Yeah, even last week I could not do that. I'm just sharing. Right ma'am, uh, your PPT also and uh, Rati ma'am and Gayatri ma'ams also, so that we can all have that crisp knowledge about. You should uh, have about different techniques, yeah, different problems. Yeah, please share your PPTs in group for everybody else to see. That would be wonderful. Okay, so sharing Thank you so much, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you so much, everyone. Have Thank a good you so much, week ahead. Much. And happy Navratras. Happy to share in advance. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. See you on Saturday. Happy Sunday. Happy mm. Sunday, ma'am. Bye. Happy entire week. And to share out. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye, ma'am. Happy Navratri Puja, ma'am. Yeah. Happy Navratri, ma'am. Oh. Yeah.